Hey yo, thanks for tuning in to The Source, your source for celebrity news. Check this out. A lot of male R&B singers like Chris Brown, Tink, and Usher have made women swoon with their smooth grooves and their sensual moves. But Smokey Robinson is like, listen little boys, go sit down somewhere and take some notes. Because I've been doing this longer than most of y'all have been alive. And I'm about to show y'all how to do it. You can't just jump on stage and just hit them with the heat and start letting it burn right away. You got to let it warm up, smoke a little bit, and then simmer. Check this out. Aw, oh, sookie sookie now. Smokey's like, y'all ain't no. Smokey still got it. <laughs> and some of y'all ladies better go home and take a pregnancy test because Smokey done got you pregnant from right up on that stage. <laughs> now, check this out. The other day, Haley Bailey's boyfriend slash baby daddy, DDG, jumped online and wrote, Sexy Red, top five female rapper of all time. Oh my goodness, can somebody please go find that young man and take all of his devices. I mean, take his phone away, take his computer away, take it all away. That young man needs to be banned from ever speaking about hip hop until he sits down and gets an actual hip hop lesson because those words are actually black blasphemous to a true hip-hop head. I mean, no person on the face of this earth ever born should ever utter those words. And even Sexy Red knows it because she responded to DDG by saying, they not gonna like you for this one. <laughs> Listen, those might be the only like words that Sexy Red has ever said that I actually like. Now, after DDG dropped that post, you know people had something to say. And one person was like, the F, she ain't even in my top 50. And then somebody else was like, this is what happens when you legalize weed. And then somebody else came through and was like, this is why nobody takes you seriously. <laughs> Listen, let me know, is Sexy Red in anybody else's top five? Let me know in the comments. And while you're down there leaving a comment, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. All right, so peep this. We haven't seen much of P. Diddy ever since the many allegations that were levied against him dropped. However, the other day P. Diddy decided to resurface on Instagram and he dropped a beautiful video of himself on a play date with his daughter. Check this out. tell you something. I don't have a whole bunch of positive things to say about Diddy, but I will give him this. He sure does produce some beautiful kids. With that being said, Diddy thinks he's slick because he knows that I can't go in on him and read him for filth the way that I usually would because of the Geneva Hip Hop Convention of 1982, which stipulates that I can't drag him and I have to commit to a ceasefire whenever the kids are around. Damn you, Diddy. Damn you. And I know, somebody's gonna come in the comment section like, Source, you must be mistaken. There was no Geneva Hip Hop Convention in 1982. Oh my goodness, shh. They don't need to know that. It's best for them to believe that we can't be taking shots when the kids are around. <laughs> but with that being said, 
even though I have like the temporary ceasefire in place, I will say this. What Diddy needs to understand is that the same way that he treats his daughter with care, love, and concern, that's the same way that he needs to be treating all women and men. Because according to the lawsuits, as we know, Diddy is allegedly an equal opportunity abuser. But that does make me wonder, how does the same dude who can dote on his own precious little one and shower her with so much love have no problem violating so many others? Perhaps it's because like DJ Khaled said, P. Diddy might have nine different personalities. Diddy has nine personalities. <laughs> Give me some real love. Turn that TV off. I took too much gummies. Uh... <laughs> just the energy just ain't right. That's my life. He's daddy's birthday present. Fuck this! I did the magic trick. Show sure. It's not. That is whatever I want for to get. Whatever I want, I have to get. I just need to be alone for a little bit, everybody. Oh, man, I just had a... Had like a three and a half hour cry. Where I just like let, the, let it all out. I'm quadruple polar. And um, so nobody knows who's coming down the stairs in the morning. And it's not like a bad thing, but it's just like those monikers help to like kind of put it in perspective of just the different personalities that I have. Diddy, Puffy, Puff Daddy, Sean Combs, Puff Puff. Puff Daddy's my favorite. Why is that? I don't know, he was just so free. And not, you know what I'm saying? Everything was just so lovely. You know what I'm saying? But then life came. Then he turned into Diddy. Then P. Diddy. Then Puff. And now for my greatest crescendo, call me Sean. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, let me know in the comments, do you believe that P. Diddy may have quadruple personality disorder? <laughs> I mean, honestly, Maya Angelou once said, when somebody tells you who they are, you really should believe them. Now, peep this, you may or may not know this, but the Freak Nick documentary has dropped on Hulu, and a lot of people... I mean, a lot of people are breathing a sigh of relief today because their behinds weren't in that documentary. <laughs> Yo, I was at the dentist's office, right? And my man got finished cleaning my teeth. I turned around, this dude had his coat on. I said, where you going, doc? He said, I gotta get home. I said, why are you rushing home? He said, I gotta see that documentary. I gotta make sure I'm not on it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow. Anyhow, in my opinion, the documentary was tastefully done. It was pretty clean, pretty PG, very informative, and they didn't blow up a lot of people's spots. As a matter of fact, they did a very good job at blurring out people's faces to protect their anonymity. So if you were one of the people who were out there acting mad primitive, like you never saw a dude before, or you never saw a chick before, and you was up on top of them cars and your daisy dukes talking about... Don't stop, get it, get it. Or you were one of them dudes that was out there who was just a little too handsy. And yes, you know exactly who you are. I'm talking to you. You should be safe. Now, at the end of the documentary, Uncle Luke and Mark Lamont Hill said that what this new generation of kids needs is a new Freaknik. These young people right now today, they want Freaknik in their life. We need Freaknik. We might not need the name Freak Nick. We might not need the same city, the same location, but we need black joy. We need black culture. We need spaces for us to unwind and to connect and to bond and not on the internet. Listen, I agree that these kids do need some sort of social outlet outside of the internet, but they don't need Freak Nick. Oh, no, 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 no. They do not need Freak Nick because one, Freak Nick in the age of BBLs Oh my goodness, that's just a recipe for disaster. <laughs> and two, while some of these kids are mad smart, a lot of them don't have the social or emotional intelligence to be able to handle that type of thing. I mean, if they actually tried to do a real freaknik, a real freaknik now, 
There would probably be a pow pow in every three seconds because it takes a certain amount of skill to be able to sit in traffic for six, seven, eight, nine, ten hours and turn that traffic jam into a full blown party. And it takes a certain amount of social skills to be able to get like 15, 20, 25 numbers in a span of 10 minutes with your little scraps of paper and your pen from people who are all standing in the same vicinity. And it also takes a certain amount of skill to be able to relax and just interact with that many black people and just chill. No internet, no TikTok, no Instagram, no Facebook, just chill. And I'm not so sure that they know how to just chill. Because I was talking to this teenager the other day, right? And they were like, I'm so bored. I said, why don't you call your friends over, go outside, turn the music up in the car, roll down the windows and let it bang, and y'all just parlay. Stand outside, socialize, and have fun. And she looked at me and she was like, what? That sounds so lame. <laughs> I was like, little girl, you don't even know what you're missing. Listen, let me know if you agree with like Uncle Luke and Mark Lamont Hill. Do these kids today need a new freak Nick? Or better yet, a better question is, are these kids today equipped to handle a freak Nick? Let me know in the comments. All right, so recently, some dude came out on the internet and dropped a video in which he said that men cannot tell whether or not a chick has less than 18 candles on a birthday cake because men only see the physical. Hey, yo, don't nobody know your daughter is 14, 15 years old, man. They don't, especially when they see them wearing these tight ass shorts with their ass cheeks hanging out the goddamn shorts men see physical we see it we don't know she 15 14 man sis you don't see your daughter out there look like she having an ass out contest with you you ain't gonna say nothing or you just gonna you just gonna victimize the people that look at her ain't you the one that bought them motherfucking clothes huh ain't you the one that man check that shit it's warm as hell, man. You got these little girls walking down the street. I'm riding down the block, seeing all the kids for the prom. Somebody got all the little girls, prom dresses, got their ass and their titties out. That's normal to you? You don't feel weird about that shit? You got grown men riding by, grown men with gray beards, looking at your little 12, 13, 14 year old daughter. Right? They ain't looking at you, looking at her ass. That don't bother you? Man, you need to get shit together, man. Summer's up. And I guess, if you catch somebody looking at your kid, if you catch somebody looking at your motherfucking kid, you're gonna bust their ass, right? You're gonna get the strap, grab the ratchet, and bust their ass, right? Because they said something disrespectful to your 15 year old with them big ass titties, big ass hanging out with them little ass shorts, little ass clothes that you bought. You bought them shit. Now, after he said that, mad people had something to say in the comments. And one person was like, sad-ish, but he right. Parents bought the clothes and mothers think it's cute. Half naked. Sad part is mofos will get mad at him and he's speaking facts. And then somebody else was like, you can definitely tell a kid from a woman. Like, come on, be for real. And then after that, somebody else came through and was like, basically, he just outed himself as a predator. Yeah, you might be onto something, because when he was talking, my spidey senses were tingling. Now, I wholeheartedly agree that some parents need to be a little bit more responsible when it comes to what they're buying their kids and letting them wear. Your daughter should not be wearing the Freak Nick special to high school. But with that being said, I also believe that a lot of these grown behind men out here need to take a little bit more accountability and responsibility for being able to assess age and saying that men only see the physical is a cop out. It's a poor excuse because if I can look at a chick and say, hmm, she's a wee young babe, then you should be able to look at that same young chick and come to the same conclusion. Because I don't have a special superpower, but what I do have is two eyes, a brain, and some common sense. Look, let me know in the comments. Do you agree with this dude? Or do you think him saying that men can't assess age because they only see the physical is an excuse? Let me know in the comments. All right, so the other day, Candace Owens was on The Breakfast Club, and while she was there, she said something very interesting. When Charlemagne the God and the crew asked her why she married a white man, Candace said that when she was choosing a husband, she never thought about her husband's race. However, she also added that people tend to marry based on their IQ. 
I want to go back to something you said earlier because I know a lot of people will hear you say, "Well, Candace, you're speaking a lot about you know the black family, but then you married a white man." Yeah, I don't. Doctor would have a huge problem with that. Okay, I would love to talk to him more about that because I mean, it's it's always very interesting to me to hear this paradox of black people who will make an argument that you know the system is racist and then also make an argument like this which is essentially making an argument for the supreme court to revisit virginia versus love and basically say that black americans and white americans shouldn't be marrying i think the greatest thing ever is when people come together on the basis of who they love and get married you know for me personally i never thought of my husband as a race it's, this is very interesting to me that two people go she's she's married to a white man i look at my kids i'm not like oh my kids are mixed I married the person that it made the most sense for me to marry. I have a mind that is just, you know, if you even knew half the things that I'm thinking about, the stuff that I'm reading, just go, 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 go all the time. It's, it's difficult for me to find, it was difficult for me to find a partner that was a challenge to me. You know, the challenge mm -hmm. that I needed, um, whether you want to say like an academic challenge, whatever it is, with my same interests. Mm -hmm. It just was. Uh, what you will know, a lot of times people think that when people come together, it's because of how they look. Actually, I actually read this in a Thomas Sowell book, or maybe it was a Shelby Steele book. Uh, people tend to marry their IQ, which is interesting. Mm. You think like if you see two black people together, oh, it's because they are two black people, but actually they, they are probably better matched based on their IQ. Um, you know, I fell in love with my husband just because I think he is one of the most brilliant people ever. You know, I love him very much. The stuff that we talk about, I'm like, there is no other person that I could have married. Now, after Candace Owens made that comment, the internet was divided because some people thought that Candace was throwing subs while other people were like, it wasn't nothing wrong with what she said. For example, one person came through and said, she hates herself and her people. And then that was followed by somebody who was like, a versus with Dr. Umo is needed. And then somebody else came through and said, it's so hard finding a black man to match your IQ. She basically said that black men were too dumb for her, so she married a white man. And then after that, somebody else was like, she clowning black intelligence in our face. Wow. However, like I said before, everybody wasn't coming up against Candace because one person said, Candace is essentially saying that she only dated men who were intellectually compatible and intellectually stimulating to her. There's nothing wrong with that. And then somebody was like, her husband, her choice, her business. Bye. And then after that, somebody else was like, she said her husband challenges her mentally. She didn't say black men don't. And that's okay. Listen, let me tell you why I don't pay Candace Owens any mind, nor do I take her statement as a sub. One, I've never heard any black person say that the Supreme Court needs to overturn Love and vs. Virginia. And the fact that she referred to it as Virginia vs. Love shows that even though Candace Owens can talk a good game, she might not be the brightest apple in a bunch. As a matter of fact, the only people who I have seen taking center stage trying to overturn a law which legalizes interracial marriages are people like Republican Senator Mike Braun from Indiana who said that legalizing interracial marriage was a mistake. Even though people like Dr. Umar and Farrakhan are not advocates for interracial marriage, I have never seen any of them out there on like the steps of the Supreme Court trying to overturn that law. Two, educators, psychologists, and sociologists have all found that IQ tests are in fact culturally biased. Therefore, they're not an accurate measure of intelligence. So, anybody who's seriously using a concept of an IQ to talk about intelligence may not have the highest IQ. And three, she said that she chose a mate whose IQ was compatible with hers. So why are people automatically assuming that that means that her and her husband both have quote unquote high IQs? For all you know, Candace could have dated a few black men and they were like, oh no babe, your IQ is just too low. <laughs> <laughs> because they might have quizzed her and she was over there answering the quiz questions like this. Now, right. Which of the following is Maya Angelou's first body of work? Which of the following? Well, you can, I, I'll, I'll let you guess. I will give you multiple. Well, which oh. of the following means you got to give us some I'll give examples. you Still I Rise. No. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I know why the cage bird sings. Is that the first one? That was a tough one. Yeah. Okay, finish this lyric. Temporary layoffs, good times, easy credit ripoffs, good time, scratching and surviving, good times. You know what? That's before my time. 
Okay. Yeah. Good answer. Yeah, mm-hmm. that, is, that is before my time. That's a little bit right <laughs> Jess before. Jess is only 32. Yeah, mm-hmm. I know, but how, how did, were you watching that? I was. You were? I did. Yeah. I never watched it. I was. A, I watched. <laughs> I feel like I watched every other show. Except, except Good yeah, Times. Except Good Times, okay. yeah. All right. Yeah, but that's that. Good Times would have been the 80s. Yeah. It was the 80s. Yeah, I was born in 92, but I watched it with my grandmother I who watched watch me it, all the time. I did not watch it, so I watched almost all of the other ones but okay. that, not that one okay yeah. okay you two for two Candace. i knew it was good times but i didn't i yeah. didn't know the uh got you yeah. this is an easy one who's the first black woman to serve as a u.s supreme court justice the first black woman to serve as a supreme court justice black woman is it now just now yes it's her it's uh what should we call it uh i can't believe i'm blanking on her name I'm totally blanking on her name. Two for three. No, 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 no. I'm just blanking on her name. I know her name. She just, she literally just got in there and I cannot. Right, can you just so give me a first it. letter? Um. See? Look at you. No, See? I know it. I was just blanking on her name. Her name is a little tricky. I was about to tell you. Her name is a little tricky. No, it's Kataji Brown Jackson. Kataji, yeah, I was about yeah, to tell yeah, you Cardi B's real name. Yeah, that's right. I said, give me, give me the first letter. Kataji Brown, yeah. Yeah, okay. Wait, how do you actually say that though? Kinta- Kintahi. Kintanji. I think Kintanji. 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 She has a tricky Kintanji. first name. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Finish this response. God is good. God is good. Amen. No, no, <laughs> no. <Jesus Christ>. <laughs> no. <laughs> I thought you were going to no. say God is great. No. Thank you for the full God is great. No. <laughs> no. no. God, all right, Charlamagne. Give it I'm, I'm going to do you, Charlamagne. Yes. Charlamagne, God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. That's right. Where's that from? Jesus church. Christ, Candace. <laughs> it's church. God is good We're all actually, the time. But why that's, do you say all the time back? Where's that's black, that from? Black church. God it's is good all the black time. church. Oh. Everybody said it. No, I, okay. I definitely did you go to black that one. No, I, I guess I, I didn't go to enough black churches growing up. <laughs> <laughs> they say God is good. And my girl said, amen. <laughs> See, IQ is subjective. But to be fair, Candace Owens did know where MLK gave his famous I Have a Dream speech, which was Washington, D.C. And she also knew how many fights the Fresh Prince got into before his mother sent him to Philadelphia. Check this out. Um, how many fights did Will Smith get into before his mom got scared? Oh, good question. Candace, come Hold on. on. She gonna it. West Philadelphia, born and raised on the playground is where I spend most of my days. Okay. Chilling out, maxing, relaxing, all cool and all shooting, shooting some, some b-ball outside, outside of the school. school. When a couple of guys, they were up to no good, started making, making trouble, trouble in my neighborhood. neighborhood. I got in one little fight. Y'all didn't think she knew that one. Y'all didn't think she knew that one. She it was just that. one. Okay. Okay. It was, and it was a little one. Yeah. <laughs> no, you can't sing. You can't sing the whole song and be like, it was a little one. <laughs> 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 but that's how you would do it if you was in it school. Was a little, I guess. A <laughs> right. His mom got scared. Yeah. Yeah. There his mom was overreacting. Was she? <laughs> Yo, let me know what you think about Candace Owens saying that people get into relationships with people who have the same IQ as them. And that's why she found herself a good white man because he was on her intellectual level. Do you guys think that that's a slight to black men? Listen, let me know what you think about Smokey Robinson giving him the Smokey special on stage. DDG saying that Sexy Red is one of the top five female rappers of all time. Did he show his love by posting those family pics. DJ Khaled saying that Diddy has like nine different personalities. Luke and Mark Lamont Hill saying this generation of kids really needs a freak Nick. The guy on Instagram saying men can't sell chicks ages. And Candace Owens saying that people marry people who have the same IQ. Let me know what you think about all of that in the comments. And while you're down there leaving a comment, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends. Hey, yo, thanks for tuning in to Celeb Source, your source for celebrity news. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Peace.